This video is produced entirely at the Geberit North America Training Facility located in Des Plaines, Illinois. Welcome! This installation video will walk you through the proper installation of the Geberit Concealed Tank and Carrier System for wall-hung toilets. Installing the Geberit system is simple and easy. We encourage you to keep your instruction manual with you during this presentation. The presentation itself is divided into three parts, the rough-in, installing the toilet, and finishing with the actuator plate. Let's begin. This installation assumes a vertical drain installation, but it can be any typical installation for wall-hung toilets. As with floor-mounted toilets, the drainage and venting for the wall-hung toilet should follow proper procedures in your area. The Geberit carrier is shipped to you complete, pre-assembled, and ready for installation. Be sure to put the bowl installation kit, which includes the waste fitting, in a safe place for later use. It contains the parts you will need for installing the toilet after the wall is complete. For demonstration purposes, the DWV waste pipe and the water supply shutoff valve, which is supplied with the carrier, have already been roughed in. An 8 o'clock orientation is critical on the shutoff valve. The frame wall should have 2 inch by 6 inch stud construction for the plumbing walls. The space between the studs is 19 and 3 quarter inches. You should know what height the homeowner wants the toilet set, as the Geberit carrier accommodates for bowl height adjustments between 15 inches to 19 inches with just two screws on the bottom of the carrier, one at the right, the other at the left. Keep in mind the type of floor that will be installed, as this will also play a factor in determining the height. Mount the carrier between the studs. The drain should be either straight down, off to the right, or off to the left, depending on the specific configuration. Mark where you will drill the pilot holes for the carrier. Mark the pilot holes on the vertical studs and on the floor stud. Remove the carrier and drill the four pilot holes for the carrier. Four lag screws will be used to mount the carrier. Place the carrier onto the studs. The carrier should be flush with the studs for maximum support. Secure the carrier to the vertical and wall studs with lag screws into the pilot holes. Geberit offers many different pipe configurations to accommodate virtually any installation requirement, including cast iron elbows. Consult your Geberit distributor for more information. Place the pipe bracket into the frame by inserting into the holes and snapping on the frame. It can only snap on one way. Listen for the click which assures proper mounting position. This bracket will hold the installation discharge pipe, which has a channel on the bottom that fits snugly with the bracket. The installation discharge pipe may need to be cut. The installation discharge pipe connects with the DWV with the supplied no-hub waste elbow connection that tightens with two screws. Refer to codes and local codes for additional information on these connections. Put the top of the pipe bracket on top and snap into place. It will click together. Tighten the two screws of the supplied no-hub with a nut driver. Take the threaded rods and insert them into the carrier. These rods will hold the toilet in place. It is not necessary to know the exact length at this point. Add the protective sleeves to the rods to protect when the wall is completed. Now you will protect the carrier when finishing the wall. Use the supplied protection plugs to cover the openings to prevent dust from getting into the flushing mechanism. Protect the actuator opening. A splash guard is provided for this purpose, and a mud plate is used to protect the entire area. Install the splash guard by tightening the four screws with a Phillips screwdriver. Do not over-tighten these screws. Install the mud guard cover. The Geberit system is now ready for the wall to be finished. For the purpose of this video, plywood was used to represent a finished wall. The next step will involve installing the toilet on the Geberit carrier. Begin your toilet installation by removing the wall protection, including the plastic sleeves from the toilet rods. Take the waste fitting from the toilet installation kit provided with the carrier and slide the rubber seal over the top. This rubber seal serves the same purpose as a wax ring used on a conventional toilet installation, but the rubber seal is much cleaner. Next, take the inlet pipe, which supplies the water to the toilet. Install the ribbed gasket at end of pipe with raised line. Take the provided lubricant packet and apply to the lip seals on the carrier inlet pipe and the installation discharge pipe. Insert the water inlet pipe into the carrier as far as it will go. Insert the waste fitting into the discharge pipe as far as it will go. Mark where both pipes meet the wall. 
Now go to the toilet and apply the lubricant to the inner diameter of the inlet opening and the outside of the waste discharge on the toilet. Take the water inlet from the carrier and insert it into the toilet. Remove the waste fitting from the carrier and slide in onto the toilet. Make another series of measurements where the outside of the toilet meets the pipes you've just inserted using a straight edge and marker. Mark both the inlet and the waste fitting pipes at that point. You now have pipes with two lines on them, a critical measurement. Measure the distance between these marks on the pipes. Take that measurement from the end, the bottom of the pipe, and add an eighth of one inch. This is where you'll cut the pipe for your finished installation. Do this on both the waste fitting pipe and the water inlet pipes. Make the cuts and clean the cuts with a file at a 45 degree angle. Insert the cut pipes back into the carrier. Install the optional sound guard cut to size if appropriate. The sound guard reduces the sound transmissions of a flush and helps protect the wall. Measure the thickness of the toilet or consult the manufacturer's instructions. Adjust the rods to the appropriate length, which is determined by adding 7 eighths of 1 inch to 1 inch to the mounting flange thickness of the toilet. Remember that the decorative pieces will cover the ends of the rods. After you've lubricated the seals on the drain pipe to help the toilet slide on and applied adhesive or silicone caulking to the backside of the toilet, attach the toilet to the wall by placing it onto the rods. While holding the toilet in place, put the leveling washers, the metal washer, and then the hex nut onto each toilet rod. Use a level to make sure the toilet is balanced before finishing the toilet. If necessary, adjust the leveling washer to level the toilet by rotating the washers. Tighten the bolts securely and snap the decorative caps on the bolts. Caulk the gap around the toilet with waterproof sealant. Congratulations! You're ready to finish the job. Cut the mud guard flush to the finished wall. Score the four corners with a utility knife and snap off the four sides. Remove the splash guard on the actuator, but keep it handy. Information on servicing the fill valve is printed on the splash guard. Flush the supply line before connecting the water supply using a cup or one of the protective plugs. Connect the water supply to the shutoff. An O-ring seals the shutoff. And be sure to hand tighten only. Do not use a wrench. Take the splash guard and place it back into place by snapping it in. Open the water. Now you're ready to install the actuator. Your Geberit actuator was supplied with a complete actuator assembly, including plastic threaded rods. These are lock pins and are inserted into the openings in the actuator mechanism on either side. Put them in. The right pin inserts with the lip down in the 6 o'clock position. The left pin with the lip in the 12 o'clock position. Now turn clockwise until you hear a click as they snap into place. The actuator frame has two screws that attach to the lock pins you just installed. There is a spring on the bottom of the frame which holds the finished actuator plate. Place the actuator frame onto the mechanism and tighten the screws into the lock pins. Be sure the frame is flush and snug to assure the actuator fit. Install the control rods. One is green and the other is white. Both rods will be used when incorporating a dual flush actuator. In most installations, the rods will have to be broken off to size. The green rod goes on the right and matches the green lever of the actuator. Insert the rod into the rocker bracket until it bottoms against a stop on the rod that prevents it from going further. At that point, simply turn it clockwise until you hear a click. Install the white control rod the same way. Install the anti-rotational bracket by snapping into place. This prevents the rods from moving. Install the actuator plate by sliding it onto the spring. The large button is for the full flush, the smaller button for the low flush. Congratulations! You've installed the Geberit Concealed Tank and Carrier System with a wall-hung toilet. An installation you can be proud of.